Hey everybody, it's Raya again for another guided tutorial and today we are doing a yin yang tapestry. And make sure you check in the description box below for links to all of the products that I use in my videos. First things first, this tapestry has been soaked in soda ash for at least 20 minutes and spun out in the washer so that it's damp but not dripping wet. Now you're going to want to find the center of your tapestry and to do that you're going to want to fold the tapestry in half, line it all up and get all the creases out and then do it again. So fold it in half again the other way, get all the creases out, make sure everything's lined up. This particular tapestry is a little difficult because it's not exactly the measurements that it said it was, but that's okay, I'm working with what I got. You're gonna mark the very center with a washable marker and open it all the way back up. When I bought this tapestry, it was labeled 58 inches by 58 inches. It's not really the case. A couple inches seem to be missing and that happens all the time. You just wanna make sure that you measure your tapestry before you get started or while you're doing it. Um, so from the top of the tapestry to the center, it's 26 inches. So I am marking 13 inches cause that is where one of the circles is going to be. And then right here, I'm marking how wide the bowl is, which is six inches. So I'm just marking exactly where I need my bowl to be to make the circle. After I have my bowl lined up, I'm going to use my marker to draw all the way around it so it's about a perfect circle. And then you're going to want to do the same exact thing with the bottom half of the tapestry. So it's going to be the 26 inches. Cut that in half. It's 13. Mark that just like you did on the top and get your circle mark on there. While I'm doing that, I'm going to mention my new merch. If you haven't noticed already, I did add three new designs to my merch store, which you can find by going on my channel. There is a store tab and it is awesome. My favorite one is the tie dye and coffee. I also have the tie dye and spill. And then every time I die, D Y E, I go to heaven. So they are super awesome. Make sure you check those out. Now I have sinew that I cut off of my spool and I have it connected to my marker and this is to help get like the really perfect roundness to the whole yin yang. So I am holding my sinew line on the center of the bottom circle and I'm starting at the center of the tapestry and making the bottom curve. So really hold on to that sinew and try to keep your marker as steady as you can. It is really hard with wrinkly fabric that's damp. And then you're gonna wanna go up and do the same thing with the top. So put your sinew in the center of the circle and start at that center point and go the opposite way. Now you're gonna wanna do the very outer circle of the yin yang and I have my sinew line right on that center of the tapestry and I'm going about an inch above the tapestry to make the very outside. It's very hard to see me do it on camera obviously but I literally am just going around and in all four areas it goes off the tapestry but when it's all done it's going to have a globe like look to it. Also I don't have a very big table so if you find yourself moving your tapestry like I do and you keep losing how much sinew you're using for distance uh, just match it up with the last marker line that you made and that will give you the same distance all, all the way around so it'll be a lot easier and a lot more even if you do that. This tapestry is a customer order that they requested. They wanted a feminine version of the fire and ice tapestry that I did a long time ago. So in case you didn't know, I do take custom orders. A lot of people ask me all the time how you put in an order. So my website is www.riastiedye.com. I do have a contact us page on there that you can directly email me. And I do take some time to get back to some people just depending on my schedule but I will always email back. And if you haven't heard from me, email me again. I will definitely get a hold of you. So I do take custom orders, stuff that I have never made before. You can always ask, I will always try. And if I can't do it, I will definitely let you know. 
And now that was just all the drawing that we have to do for this tapestry. And I know it seems very tedious, but it's very worth it when you get done. So now we're going to start tying it up. And this part, I just pull up the center of these tiny little circles. And you always want to start in the middle of the tapestry first. So anything small that you need to tie up, you want to do that first so that when you're done, you don't have to try to go back and figure things out. It's a lot harder that way. So like I said, you're going to pull up the center of that circle and you're going to make sure that the marker is all the way around in the same area. So it looks like it's lined up like you would tie on the table. And then you're going to tie it like you normally do with sinew, have your slip knot ready and wrap it around a couple of times to make sure you get those nice white lines. And then you're going to do the exact same thing with the bottom. And like I said, if you do these little circles first, you won't have to worry about them later when you're trying to scrunch. You won't have to look through all of your rumpled up fabric and try to find these circles to do them last. So definitely do these ones first. And then right after we do these, we're going to do that center curve and then we'll do the outer edge. If you have a hard time with sinew or kite string, I'm not using kite string in this video, but if you have a hard time with it and you're not sure what to do, I do have a video. It's called Tying Techniques Tutorial Sinew versus Kite String, where I talk about sinew and kite string the whole time. So I tried to get every little aspect of each so that you wouldn't have any questions at the end of it. So if you do need that video and you don't want to go looking for it, let me know in the comments and I will be happy to give you a link to that video. So now that we're doing the main curve, you're just going to pleat fold all the way up. And when you do, just try to keep your pleats about the same height. You don't want some that are too big and some that are too small. It'll make the design kind of weird or it'll look bunched up when you open it up. But practice makes perfect, so just make sure you're practicing. It'll make you better in a long run, and you'll be a lot happier with your results. So now, after we get the center done, we're going to do the very outside, which is pretty much the same thing as doing the inside. So once you have all of your marker lines tied up with your sinew, after that, you're going to take all of the other loose fabric, and you're just going to bind it with rubber bands, just like a scrunch. Try to scrunch it evenly about the same height like I always say. Once you have it all tied up, we'll be ready for dye. So now while I'm tying the rest of this tapestry, let's jam out to some tunes.
Now that we're ready for dye, we're going to dye the bottom first. Now, the customer wanted some pink, yellow, and orange in here as the main colors. So I'm using bright yellow. And then when I get to the other part of the yin yang, we're going to use deep yellow. And you definitely want to dye the bottom first because if you dye the top first and then you flip it over, your little circles that you tied up might get dye on them and you really don't want that because you want them a specific color. So we're going to avoid that this time. So I've had a lot of people ask me about how I mix my dye and every company is different. So it depends on where you get your dye from. But I do get my dye from Dharma Trading Company. I'm not affiliated with them in any way or sponsored in any way. I just really like their dye. All of my bottles are four ounce bottles and I always do one teaspoon of dye per four ounces. You fill it up with water. If you're interested in using urea, uh, that is one teaspoon in with the dye as well before you put the water in there. Urea is just a chemical that helps keep the dye moist after you put it on your project so that it doesn't dry out and it has time to react with the fabric. So this one sat for 24 hours and when you rinse it, you're going to want to start with cold water and gradually to warm. Try to make sure you get as much of the dye out as you can until the water runs clear. Ooh, what a pretty version of a fire and ice tapestry. This looks so good and I'm so glad that I did it this way and I really think the customer is going to love it. When you wash, make sure you wash it by itself with hot water. I use Synthropol, which is a textile detergent, and it really helps bring out all the rest of that dye. If you find my guided tutorials helpful, please let me know in the comments. And if you don't like them, let me know anyways. Happy tie-dyeing.